and come out, feel each other out. Um, you know, it'll kind of depend on if he comes hard, I'm going to shoot. If he comes out and feels me out, I'm going to try to wait until he tries to come out with some punches and then I'm going to try to take the fight to the ground, win the fight there. Win is a win, uh, but I always want to win uh, and take the judges out of, uh, you know, making a decision. That's the easiest way to take, you know, the fans don't have no dispute. They don't have to worry about the scorecards. You know, if you knock the guy out, you know, there's nothing that anybody can say. Marvin Eastman is 35, newcomer Travis Luter is four years younger. There is a reach advantage, but again, remember, Luter is more jiu-jitsu and ground skill than the pro boxer and kickboxer Marvin Eastman. Our referee for this light heavyweight matchup is Mario Yamasaki. All right, gentlemen, look at me here. Go, go back to your corner. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's go! All right, we're underway as they tap gloves. Oh, Marvin Eastman doesn't want the tap, Frank. He wants to get to business, remember? His UFC debut against Vitor Belfort suffered a, a nasty, nasty cut over his eye, kind of the middle of the forehead, and the fight was stopped. Marvin wants some redemption. Luter wants to show very well today. Luter looking for the shoot here early? Definitely. Marvin's really not giving him anything right now. He's not committing too far forward. I mean, if Marvin shoots him with a flurry of punches, Luter's looking to change levels and maybe get on his hips, but he's really not giving anything right now. He's kind of looking for the jab, and if right now if Luter were to shoot, he'd leave himself open for a strike from a knee being stuffed into the ground. So it's kind of a cat-and-mouse game right now. Pretty obvious Travis Luter doesn't want to exchange right now. No, not at all. Looks like his, the way his posture is is totally defensive. He's just looking for a shot. Of course, the danger of Eastman jumping in. Come on, let's he let's leaves go, himself go, vulnerable go. to that shot. So a little cat and mouse, as Frank mentioned early on. Marvin Eastman in the white trunks. Travis Luter in the dark trunks. Just underway. Go, One of three five-minute rounds. Combination, and Luter steps away. The bright lights, that first time. You had a first time in the octagon. How different is it than your previous mixed martial arts experiences? Um, being underwater, I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the guy in front of me. I couldn't have heard nothing. Oh. Oh. And that is one way to look at it. You, you close everything out. You just say it's something I've done all my life. Right, Frank? Correct. You know, so, you do it so many times, it just becomes you know, routine. You know? Great point. Um, again, Marvin looking for a strike. I mean, I don't know why he maybe doesn't throw a little bit of a low kick something here. And just, I guess the fear of being taken down on his back. But Crowd I'm, wants some engagement early, Frank. Definitely, no one wants to see two guys. Was impatient, around. you know. The East Coast, they want action early. They, you know, they're excited about the Red Sox. You know. <laughs> There's a combination by Luter, just trying to keep Eastman off guard. Though no damage would have been done. So this is where Luter should go ahead, and maybe go ahead and engage in a few strikes, throw a few hands, get Marvin not worried so much about being taken down, but maybe want get Marvin to want to mix it up. And then when Marvin forgets about the takedown, that's when he wants to shoot in. How about Marvin with the, with the legs? When when you kick and you lead with the leg, does that make you more vulnerable for the takedown than if you lead with the hands? It really does. I mean, you're putting one foot up off the ground. You're not as stable as having two feet on the ground. Thus, the reason why he may not be engaging on the legs of his opponent, right? The bottom line is um, you have to open up. I mean, you have to take chances sometimes in the fight. You just both can't sit there and play safe. I mean, you're not going to win by not doing anything. Well, it's obvious that Eastman has great respect for Luter on the ground, though, because he's not giving him any chance to get there. And don't forget, Marvin Eastman has a great wrestling background, and he's extremely strong. So we need some engagement here in round one. One and two, Travis, one and two. Eastman with the left jab. And he'll back up to the center of the ring. Marvin, get off first! Luter obviously first. doesn't want to engage in the shoot first because he doesn't want to eat a knee. No, he doesn't want to take a bad shot. And, you know, Luter's kind of basically at this point. Marvin is actually Marvin. There we go. Nice inside low kick. Eastman talked a lot this week about his continuing pro boxing and kickboxing experience and he feels that that keeps his hands real sharp looking for the combination Luter backs right up didn't really care who he fought and the change was made from Patrick Cote a striker who will fight against Tito Ortiz here tonight there's a kick caught the inside of the knee Luter went with it there's the shoot and a nice sprawl by Marvin Eastman and the engagement was there so they were waiting each other out 
And that was perfect. So I don't understand where the sprawl that well. Marvin doesn't go ahead and engage with his strikes a little bit more. I mean, even if Luder gets in on his hips, I see that Marvin can still get his hips out in a good sprawl. Un until you are actually engaged with someone, though, do you, you don't really know, Frank, do you, how good their takedowns are? No, I mean, that's Maybe true. now he feels, I, I'm just trying to guess no, here, no, but, right? What both fighters are doing right now, they're trying to feel each other out. But, um, I mean, I think just on paper, Marvin has to have a little bit more confidence that he's going to escape the takedown. I mean, he's going to realize, unless this guy totally catches my heels back, pushes me off the fence or whatnot, that, that there you go. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, perhaps because he felt the simplicity of that last sprawl, He'll feel more, feel confident, more confident now. Would that make sense? And also, too, you know, a lot you're of a cerebral fighter, so I'm going to be picking your brain all <laughs> night, buddy. I'm going to be picking your brain all night. Also, too, I can see maybe you know, as you go to the corners, go, corners will be able to give him a little bit of assurance, saying, "Hey, look, you know, that was scoring. Go for it. That's what you need to do." Right. He might not. He, he might have a different idea of what's going on in the fight than what we are seeing going on. You know, there's two perspectives going on. There's what the fighter's seeing and what your corner sees. Eastman. If anyone has scored points here in the first round, it is Marvin Eastman, but. Action packed it was not. No. And the crowd here at Atlantic City will react. Luder, the black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Confident that he can submit Are you ready? his opponent Eastman, but Are he's got to get to the ground Let's to go. do so. He attempted one shot in the first round. Here you see it now, what I'm talking about the difference in fouls. Oh, there's a good call. I see. So look at the confidence. I think Marvin's going to keep building up confidence, and Luda's going to be losing confidence. Marvin came out exactly what I felt his corners were going to do and say, look, let it go. Yep. You're not going to win by sitting there throwing one jab, one right hand. You're the better striker. Throw. This guy is not going to take you down. The difference in confidence you talked about. And a big shot by Travis Luda. One punch knockout. Can you believe it? No. Oh, my goodness. I wow. This goes to show in a fight, anything can happen. I don't think anybody in the world predicted that happen. Travis Luter knocks out Marvin Eastman. Unbelievable. Wow, I'm impressed. Looked like Marvin came in, dropped his left hand a little bit. He got caught with a straight right hand. <laughs> in the background, you heard the comment. I thought you were a jiu-jitsu guy. What are you doing knocking out a kickboxer? Wow. Again, look up. Uh, Oh, yeah, he threw a kick, dropped his hand. Oh. Great shot. Bam! Well, it wasn't so much a straight right hand, but right hand didn't say. Scored on the button. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mario Yamasaki has called a stop to this contest at 33 seconds of the second round with a winner by knockout, Travis Newton.